And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Ryan Metzler. Hey everyone, it's Ryan Metzler here again, and today we're going to take a look at a small little game called Timeline. Uh, now, it's Timeline and all of the various expansions that I happen to have for it that I've combined into one. So the cards you'll be seeing aren't just from Timeline, but from Timeline Historical Events and Timeline Inventions, Timeline Geography, all types of different combinations of categories, but they all play together. Anyhow, this is a game about putting things in chronological order. You'll have cards with events or inventions on them, and you're trying to fit them into the right order of a timeline. And whoever does so the best, and uh, without equal, will be the winner. So real quick, we'll take a look at how this plays out, what the components look like, and then we'll come back here and get my final opinions on it. So here you can see several boxes of timeline, and the reason you're looking at several of them is because I've combined all of my cards together. Uh, so you're going to see cards here from Timeline Inventions, which was the first one. Uh, you're actually not going to see Timeline Diversity because I haven't opened these yet, but uh, there's Timeline Diversity, we have Timeline Discoveries, which is going to be when things were discovered, uh, and we have Timeline, uh, what's this one, Historical Events, which is going to have the dates of historical events. Uh, and those are all kind of mixed into this pile of cards here. You'll see I have a lot of cards, uh, but I'm going to separate some of them off to make it a little bit easier to use and put the rest of these aside. Now, the concept of this game is that you're trying to put things in chronological order. And whoever does so the best is going to win the game by getting rid of all of their cards first. Now, at the beginning of the game, there's going to be an event out on the table. For example, this one here is Julius Caesar declared dictator for life. Well, this happened a long, long time ago. Uh, so we'll flip it over, and it'll be the starting card. The year is minus 44, or 44 BC. Uh, he was declared dictator for life. Now, Everyone who's playing is going to have cards. The number of cards you have is going to depend on the number of players in the game. Be it six, five, or four cards for the number of players. Fewer players is more cards. Now, when I put these out, I'm going to have a bunch of cards that are all going to have events on them. Let's say we have you know, enough players that we need five cards. So everyone will have their five cards. And you'll look and you'll see, okay, I have the cards, uh, Das Kapital, Cave Paintings, Coco, The Brick, and The Rubber Band. So some of them may be inventions, as I said, some of them may be historical events, uh, whatever the, the theme is. But you're going to try and figure out when these things happen, and you have a choice. Either it happened uh, before 44 BC, meaning you know more negative into the BCs, or it happened after. Well, uh, you can be pretty sure that Das Kapital was made after minus 44 or 44 BC. So you'd say, okay, I think this card here uh, is after 44 BC, and you'd flip it over and place it there, and it, of course, is. It's 1867. So, you got that right, and it would move on to the next player's turn, and they'd have a chance to take one of their cards. Maybe they have uh, the Celsius scale, the start of the Civil War, the uh, deciphering of hier uh, hieroglyphy, and uh, the, con the constitute started, uh, or sorry, the construction started on the Tower of Pisa. So they have these five cards, and they pick one. Uh, maybe they think uh, that the Celsius scale was invented slash discovered before 1867, but after minus 44. And you have these three choices, either after, before, or in the middle somewhere. So you'd choose and you'd say, okay, I put it here, and that's, of course, correct. Now, it would move on to the next player's turn. If you were to get one wrong, you would obviously know the date at that point. But what you're going to do is discard that card and take a new card from the top of this deck to replace it. So if this person later were to say cave painting was after 1867, well, no, obviously it's minus 30,000. So that's wrong. They'd set this aside. They'd replace their card. The, the turn would still pass, but, you know, they're, they're going to have to continue to try and get rid of cards. Their number's not going to go down. So other people will be getting rid of cards. This person has failed to do so and will be falling behind, potentially. As I said, the objective here is to get rid of all of your cards. So if once they get rid of all of these four cards, they would be the winner. They'd be the first one to get rid of them all. But as you see here, the, the gaps are going to narrow. Eventually, there'll be something between minus 44 and 1741, and maybe there'll be something between 1741 and 1867. And you have to pick the right gap to put your card in in order to get rid of it. Now, it's not just good enough to get rid of your last card. If but two people in the, in the last round, you're going around, you have a start player. If two people in the last round manage to get rid of all of their cards, then they're going to be tied. Everybody who didn't get rid of all of their cards is going to be out of the game, but everybody who did is going to get a new card. And at that point, you're going to see who can get their card placed correctly. So, you know, the airplane, we go here, no, that's wrong. So that person stays into the game, but this person maybe gets the hypodermic uh, syringe correct, and they put it 
you know, here and they get it right and they're out now. So they're the only person who managed to go out in that round and that player would be the winner. So not only do you have to get rid of all of your cards, but you have to do so when no one else is able to do so in the same round, and then you'll be the winner of Timeline. Well, there you have it. That is Timeline, uh, a very, very good filler type game. Uh, I like it a lot. Now, if you have people who are terrible at history, they're not going to like this game. But here's the, the trick there is that it's a very informative game. Uh, it's one that you can learn a lot from. Maybe you don't know when the pencil eraser was invented. I know I didn't know and still actually don't remember when the pencil eraser was invented. Uh, but this will tell you and maybe you can learn from that. You can, you can gather some history. You can find out when the Constitution was, uh, was drafted or maybe you can find out when... Um, you know, France became independent from somebody or other, who knows. Uh, but there's all types of events, there's all types of inventions, there's all types of things, and you can try and figure out when in history different things happen. So I think it'd be great for use in schools, it's great as a filler game, uh, and they keep coming out with more and more packs which will diversify the game and give you more things to learn about as time goes on. So if that sounds interesting to you, check out Timelines. Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. What?